What is the best render work account for the highest performance in Call of Duty Modern Warfare 3 and Warzone? For today's video, I actually benchmarked and tested four different systems, three having an Intel CPU and one that actually has an AMD CPU at two different display resolutions. Because spoiler alert, there isn't actually one solution that fits it all and for all of these four systems I actually found a different number that worked best for that configuration. On screen I'm showing the first results for my primary system which has an i9 13900K, an RTX 4080 and is running a 1440p display. Now on this graph from left to right we can see the performance both in the 1% lows in the light blue colors and in the average FPS in the dark blue colors and the different bars are for different values of the render worker count. Now the render worker count that the game defaults to is the one that I indicated with 0% difference and in the case of my primary system this is with a render worker count of 16. As you can see this is complete nonsense on this system having a render worker count of 16 gives me the worst 1% lows and the second worst average FPS and therefore I think this is actually quite an important topic to get right even though people say that you shouldn't really bother about this value anymore, just keep it to default, in my opinion that's complete nonsense because you are actually losing out on significant performance and this is actually noticeable when playing the game. I actually accidentally set this to the wrong number after testing and then reloaded the game a few days later, I played a few rounds and I just felt like something was off. The game just didn't feel responsive, it felt like it was stuttering all the time and that is because the render worker count wasn't set to the appropriate number. Now for those of you who don't know off the top of your head, the i9-13900K actually has 8 physical cores and that is performance cores. And the way to actually check how many cores your CPU has, because this is actually quite an important information when it comes to setting the render worker count correctly, is by opening up the task manager and then going to performance. Then you can click on CPU and now you can see your CPU brand and model here at the top right. So in my case i9-13900K. Then you want to head over to Google and enter the model of your CPU here. Look for the intel.com website and here you can see the number of performance cores which in my case is 8. Finally in order to find the number of physical cores on AMD or if you have an Intel CPU that does not have performance and efficiency cores you can basically just open the task manager and look for the number of cores in the performance tab. Now historically I always recommended to set the render worker count to the number of physical cores that you have on your system, which in this case would be 8. Other guides on YouTube usually always recommended your physical cores minus 1, which is number 7 on this graph, which actually also yields the highest performance in this very case. I should highly stress at this point in the video though that this has been the only of my four systems where the render worker count 1 minus physical cores resulted in the highest performance. Frankly the difference between the 7 and 8 is also quite small, I mean this 1 FPS on the averages is pretty much negligible, however the increase in the 1% lows is actually quite nice and from my testing I actually saw that the uh, frame time graph was much smoother when I selected a value of 7 for the render worker count on my primary system. Now from my testing this system at that resolution is actually still significantly GPU bottlenecked which is quite an important information to know when it comes to correctly setting the render worker count. So essentially if you are running a 4040p system and you are GPU bottlenecked then the best setting for your system on Intel is to set either your number of physical cores or the number of performance cores minus 1. Now the results that I'm showing in this video are based on the performance that I'm seeing in Plunder because the in-game benchmark doesn't work any longer and therefore I had to actually load into a new Plunder match for each render worker count setting on all of these four systems. So if you enjoy this tremendous effort that I'm putting into providing you with the best information for your specific use case then definitely hit that like and consider subscribing if you want to see more video like this. Now when we move on to a system that instead is severely CPU bottlenecked, as you can see in this example where I have an i7-7700K which is only a 4 core CPU that is paired with an RTX 3060 Ti and is driving a 1080p display, we can see that the results are wildly different. Interestingly for this system the default render worker count has been set to 3 by the game which is what I would recommend for a GPU bottlenecked system, however here you can see that render worker count 5 
So 1 plus the physical cores actually resulted in both the highest 1% lows and average FPS. On the other hand, if we double the render worker count to 8, we can see that performance drops once again. And if we halve it to just 2, then of course we are significantly losing performance because the system is already significantly CPU bottlenecked and now we just made the bottleneck worse. So in conclusion, on a heavily CPU bottlenecked system on Intel, I would probably recommend to either go for the number of physical cores that you have or that plus one. However, as with all of these recommendations, you really should go into the game and enable the MSI Afterburner overlay to see the frame time graph and then observe this for a little bit with different values of render worker count and figure out for your specific system what the best value is in terms of getting the most stable frame time graph. Now, if you don't know how to get this set up, then check out the video linked in the card right now where I'm explaining how to set up the MSI Afterburner overlay to show up just like in my videos. Next, I have another 1080p system that now is again heavily GPU bottlenecked with an i9-9900K and an RTX 2060 Super, which isn't the most powerful GPU, I guess. And here we can see that the game defaults to a render worker count that equals the number of cores plus one, which does seem to perform quite well. However, honestly, all of the 1% lows are pretty much all over the place and there isn't a clear pattern here. And therefore, my interpretation is that we just have sampling uncertainty in the 1% lows here. The averages are essentially the same for all of these render worker counts. And therefore, in a situation where you have a low resolution uh, display with a weak GPU, you don't really need to bother too much about the render work account because at this low resolution, your CPU is anyways always much faster than your GPU, regardless of the value of render work account that you choose. Finally, you guys have been bugging me for years now if I wasn't able to include some AMD results in my testing. And as of a few months ago, I was actually able to put together my first ever all AMD gaming rig which has a Ryzen 7 7800X 3D CPU. This is a 8-core 16-thread CPU, which I paired with an RX 7900 XTX, and that is running a 1440p display. Now, the default in terms of render worker count that this system has been set to is the number 9, so number of physical cores plus 1. And for my testing, this is basically the best setting. However, what is really bad, and that is something that people actually have been recommending a lot for AMD for some reason, and that is to set it to 15 or 16. And you can see if you set your render work account on this specific CPU to 16, you are losing 20% of your 1% lows. And that is a significant increase in the stutteriness of your game. And you're really going to feel that quite a lot. Also, here we can see that physical cores minus one, which was the best value for a GPU bottleneck system on Intel, really doesn't apply. We can see significantly worse performance in both the 1% lows and the average FPS. And instead, we should go either with eight, or if we see that the frame time graph shows us some spikes, then maybe increasing this number to nine might help to smooth out the frame time graph. So in conclusion, I showed you that using the default value of the render work account that the game assigns to your specific system only gave me the best performance in half of the systems that I tested. And generally using the render work account that equals the number of physical cores or the number of performance cores on Intel is usually yielding you somewhere near the best possible results. So here I also provide you with a quick overview of the most um, popular CPUs that I could find uh, with their respective best render worker counts, which you can take as sort of a baseline value, which is usually gonna yield you pretty much the best performance. However, I invite you to perform your own tests to see whether increasing or decreasing this value by one will yield you even better results. Also, I'd like to mention that for this video, unfortunately, I was not able to test with a 4K monitor because I simply do not own one of those and therefore do not use these results if you are playing on 4K and instead perform your own tests to find out which render work account works best with your system. Now, if you're interested in even more information regarding the Call of Duty Modern Warfare 3 and Warzone config file, then check out this video where I'm going into a deep dive of which of these settings actually has a measurable impact on performance. But that's it for today, guys. Thank you so much for watching. Have a wonderful day and I'll see you guys in the next video.